atonement is profitable because there's no good or bad. It looks upon, like in a farmer's field or on a farm, and sees the manure as something very good for the soil. Where some people think manure, they throw it out. They actually throw it out in truckloads. Where the atonement doesn't see it that way. The atonement sees that everything that's happening, everything that's happening, is to be seen from a purified perspective. So you can't be guilty in a purified perspective. Even though you seem to do have done something wrong, you're calling someone and you're feeling a and you just fear being alone or you're bored, there's no reason to feel guilt because of that. There's no justification for guilt. And that guilt gets projected on, for example, you thinking that, okay, I'm doing something wrong. He'll come down on me because I'm too scared to realize I'm just scared of God. Yes. Okay. When, if you go back, really, you're just afraid of God's will. And the purpose that Carrie and David and Kirsten and I share in the, in, this, in the course, in the Unified Purpose, is a reflection of God's will. So we're just symbolically represent, representing God's will, which is... God's will is free. God's will is happy, right? And you just look. It's, it's not about right and wrong things to do. We talked about that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Try not to look at things as right and wrong behaviors, because that's worldly thinking. That's the ego. Just look at it as a call for love. A call for love is not good or bad. It's just a call for love. So backwards. You, you mentioned earlier um, that they're not my thoughts. And uh, I remember moments where that was clear. There's also a line that says you are responsible for your thoughts because that's the only thing you are, you can change. Because that's where you exercise choice. Right. So how do I? How, how do those meet? If I'm not my thoughts, how can I be responsible for them? And yet, you're responsible for seeing its falsity. So you're responsible because you projected meaning on them, and there and there is no real meaning on them in and of themselves. And you're responsible for accepting the Holy Spirit's meaning. So you're responsible or required to forgive because you've made it real. God didn't. You made it real in your mind. It's your mind that needs to be convinced. So the requirement comes in for you because you made a decision for that. So it has to be your responsibility. But the responsibility is not in the correction. It's in the acceptance of the correction. Therefore, it leaves you totally free again. You just have to accept the fact that what I think is wrong and what I think is right equally are illusory. And they're, so they're not my thoughts because they're not real thoughts. Right, because only because ideas do not their source, and the idea of you're the idea of God. And if I were to ask you, well, where do these thoughts come from? There's no answer to that question. There's no answer to it because okay. they're unreal thoughts with an unreal source. The reason why not one thought in this world is wholly true is because it's perceptual. See, the swing side of you being a guilty guy or a bad guy for not listening to your prompts, the swing side is, oh, I'm a good guy. I'm getting it, I'm understanding it, and I'm doing it. I don't want you to do that either. I don't want you to just be smiling and just saying, hey, I'm doing it all, Jeffrey. I'm smiling, I'm just doing, I'm doing exactly what you say. That's not it either. Can you say both sides of that again? Well, the swing side to, oh, you know, Jeffrey's going to think that I'm not being in purpose in here, I'm on the phone, I'm talking, and all this guilt coming up, right? Well, the swing side to that is you could be attracted to it, and you won't phone people. Well, I'm not going to do that because it's not purpose, and... And plus, you listen to everything that I say, and then you do it. I'm not asking you to do that, because it's very mechanical. That's mechanical. That's just a superficial acceptance. What I'm asking you to do is be very honest with yourself. You will make mistakes, but they're not really mistakes in the atonement. They're not mistakes. You just have to be honest with yourself. And it will direct you.
let go of the idea that I'm a good person or a bad person. Just let go of all those thoughts. You're just being called into an abstract purpose. Only you know if you're distracting or not, if you're afraid to be quiet. And you have to be very honest with yourself. Then you can't force quiet either. My, my, the tendency I would think is that it's, I'm not afraid of, well, I'm, I'm some of, of course, I'm afraid of the quiet, but those particular situations, it's, there's just this deep fear that I'm always doing something wrong. If I'm not mind watching, which must mean I'm alone, in my mind, you know, then it's bad. So it's like anything other than just sitting there in a chair and supposedly looking at your thoughts is wrong. That sounds arduous. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like a strain and stress. Yeah, and that's exactly what Jesus is saying in the workbook lessons. Don't strain. Stop when you feel the strain, he says, right? Yeah. Stop. And then do but what? I've also came to you too Sorry. and I said, I said, you can relax a little bit with the tapes. And there was I mo then there was another time where I came and said, well, I feel that there's be more tapes now. You see, it's just moment to moment. It looks however it looks. Yeah. You see? The, it's moment to moment. You can't really box it in and make it look a certain way. But the spirit always knows what needs. If if it's to be a little bit more of a of a direction towards the form, some, you know, and the symbols we're using, such as recording all the tapes and stuff and putting formatting them, and then there's times where the spirit says, okay, I'm having you do something else, so pull away a little bit. But see, we can't figure those prompts out. All we, gotta, all we have to know is that everything is for healing. And if we're listening to the Holy Spirit, and we're not listening, when you're people-pleasing, Jeffrey, or, you know, acting from the self-concept, you know, or thinking you know what purpose is, or constantly witch-hunting in your mind, you can't really listen. And when I'm doing that, when I'm witch hunting and when I'm really serious, I'm going to draw forth witnesses to how guilty I feel by thinking that you're watching me and I'm always doing this wrong or carries conflicting behavior and all that stuff. That all comes with that, doesn't it? Yes. So I might walk in the room and say, hey, what's going on? And, and the ego will interpret it through the guilt. Yeah. Oh, there I go again. I, I'm doing something wrong. I trust that you're being honest with yourself. And if I did have a prompt in my mind to speak something, you know I would speak it. But if I do speak it, it's not from a place of right and wrong. And that's what you had to see, that we're joining together to help each other to look at what is unwatched. But the real purpose is it's just to love. So if there's anything unlike love in there, then you can say our best use, the best use of our time is allowing what is unlike love, lack of love, to come up and to be exposed in the, in the purpose of the joining. You see? So then everything will be around that. And I'm always looking for the appropriate behavior that I can consistently do so that it's good. Trying to act. And it's like, you can't act your way to the kingdom of God. Like you might, you might have to Start over, like the bathroom. One time I went to the washroom and then came out and um, I closed the door. And Carrie came right after and opened it so that <laughs> there was a flow. And then this morning I left it open. Okay, I closed it because that's what she did last time. And then you came and opened it. I'm, okay, she's got nothing to do. <laughs> I have to cut that open. It's like, that's okay. so. But but that's just, again, that's just, you're, you're looking for meaning where there is no meaning. Spirit prompts it. However, you know, in the moment, it's all just a dance. The picture looks however it looks. You can't, consistency is not about form. Consistency. You will not find anything consistent in form. Is the opposite or the antithesis of consistency, which constancy, which is truth, which is reality. Perception is the opposite. 
consistency is in purpose in my mind. You can say, yes, the forms are representative of, you know, you know, you can say a consistent, you consistently being in purpose, you will be happy. So, right? So you would appear to be happy. That's consistency. But the body, I can stop, I can close my mouth here, I can go into meditation and you go into some Buddhist place, Buddhist monasteries and you think the, mo the monks, they needed to hear a happy joke because you go in and they look pretty sour, but they're just sat in meditation and their face, the whole body is just released and they're just deep in their meditation. Now when they open up their eyes, they might smile or not, but you see, you don't uh -huh. really know what's going on oh. behind it. I don't know, I do not know how to look upon the world or myself. So when we say in the course a dream, that's when we say the thoughts are false. So I'm not responsible for, these are not my thoughts because they're just dream thoughts and the dream is nothing real. But I'm responsible for my interpretation of them. Either false or real. That's the interpretation. Right. So I have two, two interpretations, the Holy Spirit or the ego. And the ego's way takes a myriad of different thoughts and forms. It just fragments them further. It judges them. It puts them on a hierarchy of errors, or actually, the ego doesn't believe in error, it believes in sin. So the ego makes them sins. That's where your guilt comes from. In your mind, is that you believe that you've sinned. Whereas when, the Holy Spirit looks at it as error. As error, but error is error. It's just false. Uh huh. An error can be corrected. And only can be corrected right now. And only right now. But you can't do that right now if you think that you have, you can do right and wrong behaviors, then you will be just modifying behaviorally again. Oh, Jeffrey's here, I need to, I need to modify. What is spirit about that? I can feel my body relaxing. This. <laughs> There's nothing spirit about that. It's all intuitive, too. It's like, I know when there's something that needs to be said in this house, and I will say it. And there's lots of times I see stuff, and then I just, I know that the Holy Spirit is working, and then I watch it pop through, and I didn't say a thing. I watched it come up with Carrie or you, and then it's there, and then it's gone. And I didn't even need to say anything. Huh, that might be, must be neat to us. Right. So you just find yourself quiet. And then there's times where I do talk to Carrie or to you and I say something. And then it doesn't matter. Not saying it, saying it is, you know, it's it's all depends on the moment. Huh. And what you feel called to say. And it's always about purpose. Everything that's being said is about purpose. It's about forgiveness. You can't forgive when you believe in a hierarchy of errors. You can't believe in it. There's no order of difficulties in miracles. And if there's right or wrong behaviors and actions, and right and wrong things to do, then that totally pits me against the miracle. I mean, I can't accept the miracle when I believe in that, because there's an order there. Those autonomous actions in the past, they're very concrete. They're solid. It's a solid thing when you see a wrong behavior, isn't it? Yeah. That's why you feel so so luggy and so unhappy and guilty is because you're looking and you're like, oh my God, I did this wrong thing and I'm going to be seen as wrong. And now there's this real memory of you doing something wrong. How can you change that? And it works that way with guidance too. I, ego's view of guidance is that you get the guidance and you either do it or you don't. If you do it, you're, you're good. If you don't, I'm bad. That's just the way the ego yeah. You can say, this is a good way to look at it, Jason. There's two consequences, two alternatives, two choices. One, fear, love, Holy Spirit, ego, right? Fragmentation, wholeness. So if you're listening to the Holy Spirit, He guides you from pain. He guides you into a place of timelessness, beyond time, space, concepts, beyond concepts altogether. He brings you into an abstract relationship of just dancing with your prompts, listening. You live as if there is no world. And in that state, the world doesn't seem real. It's happy. Everything is perfect, right? Because it's a reflection.